Ketamine is a very powerful anesthetic drug that's made its way into psychiatry. I'm going to talk about what it does and what it doesn't do. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and this channel is about mental health education and self-improvement. Click subscribe and the notification bell if you don't want to miss an episode. Ketamine is known on the street as Special K. It's a hallucinogen and induces dissociation, which is detachment from your environment. In clinical medicine, the drug is primarily used to maintain, to start and maintain anesthesia. It's a dissociative anesthetic, which means it makes you immobile, it makes you forget, but it doesn't completely make you unconscious. And so that's why it's usually used in conjunction with another anesthetic agent. It's one of those uh, medications that gives you that floating feeling. Chemically, it's an NMDA receptor agonist. NMDA stands for N-methyl-D-aspartate. How it treats depression is still unclear, but the latest thought is that it's through a metabolite or breakdown product of ketamine. At lower doses than we use for anesthesia, ketamine does have antidepressant effects. In fact, not only does it improve depression, but it removes it quickly, and it's the best drug we have so far to treat suicidality, even better than lithium. In 2000, the first randomized controlled trial showed that ketamine produced rapid improvement in depression. It's not FDA approved yet for the use in depression, but it's, it's gonna need more studies and we need more answers on long-term safety. So how does it work and what's the catch? Ketamine is infused through an IV, usually over 40 minutes. During and after the infusion, you can experience hallucinations and a feeling of depersonalization or derealization. You can feel unreal or like things around you aren't real. But these effects are only temporary and go away within minutes to hours of receiving the infusion. You can feel better within 24 hours, but here's the catch. The antidepressant effect only lasts about five to seven days but you can get some lower level of improvement that lasts maybe a week or two from that single infusion. So to extend the effect, people will administer multiple uh, infusions. How many infusions it takes um, for the person to get better and stay better is individual, and we don't have a set protocol for that. Some people have gotten one or two infusions and then are maintained on antidepressants, maybe at a lower dose than they were before they started the infusions, or some people will get a few infusions and then are maintained on ketamine nasal spray. Currently, to get the nasal spray, you have to go to a compounding pharmacy to have it made for you. A compounding pharmacy is a specialty pharmacy that makes preparations to fit a specific medical need. So in this case, nasal ketamine is not commercially available, so a compounding pharmacy will make the product. But S-ketamine is a commercial formulation that's still in the approval phase to be used for treatment-resistant depression and depression with imminent risk of suicide. So if and when that medication is approved, it will be sold by Janssen Pharmaceuticals under the brand name Spravato, and that will eliminate the need to go to a compounding pharmacy. Newsflash. Since I made this video, the FDA has approved Spravato. Yeah, that's right. But before you get too excited, here's a few nitty gritty details. For the first four weeks, you do two treatments a week. Then from week four to eight, you do a, a treatment once a week. Then after eight weeks, you can go either weekly or every two weeks. You can't just go pick it up from the pharmacy and do it yourself. You have to go to your doctor's office and that doctor has to be registered within this monitoring system. Also, once you go and get the treatment, um, there's certain rules or um, procedures you have to follow. It's similar to going and getting a colonoscopy. Um, you can't eat or drink for a certain period of time beforehand and you're required to sit in the doctor's office for two hours after you do the spray. You do the spray yourself, but then you have to wait there for two hours and you're instructed to have someone drive you home. So that's a pretty big time commitment, probably not much more than if you were getting the infusion, but I think because it's the spray that it's just implied or people automatically think that it's gonna be a whole lot easier, but it's still very well managed as far as 
the protocol and the rules to follow and all of that. Also, when you go to the doctor's office twice a week, are you gonna be charged for those appointments? You don't really have to see the doctor, but there's gonna need to be a dedicated person who does all of the monitoring and, and checking you in and all of that. So the answer is probably yes. It may be a nurse's visit or a medical tech visit or something, but I doubt that there'll be no charge for you to show up and get your spray. So despite all these little nitty gritty details, this is still a breakthrough in the treatment of treatment resistant depression. What are the downsides? Well, as for side effects, you have the dissociation that I mentioned, and then other common side effects are things like nausea, dizziness, and drowsiness. But another practical issue is cost. Here in Georgia, it could run you $250 to $300 per infusion. And since this is not FDA approved, it probably won't be covered by your insurance. So if you need several insurance, then you're talking about spending about $1,000. And then on the maintenance, the nasal spray can run you anywhere between $45 to $125, depending on how often you use the spray. Some people may only use it once a week, but some people could use it three times a week. Then there's the issue of finding a provider. I'm in a metropolitan area where there's a few major providers who have people who are trained in the use of anesthesia doing the infusion. But if you don't have that, then you have to find a psychiatrist who is comfortable putting a needle in your arm and running an infusion and giving you anesthesia. I have a feeling the nasal spray won't have as dramatic an effect or may not last as long as the infusion because there's just no substitute for putting something directly into your bloodstream. But it can still make a huge difference in how we treat people with suicidal depression and treatment resistant depression. Check out my video on treatment resistant depression to get a better sense of the obstacles that we face and the current treatments that we have. And share this video with others. See you next time.